Welcome to the Solid Signal Podcast for the week of July 22nd, and unfortunately the subject of this week's podcast needs very little introduction for a lot of folks out there who are missing a channel or two of their local channels. There are quite a few markets affected, unfortunately, by uh, fee disputes, and channels have been blacked out on DirecTV and even a few on Dish. Um, I thought it'd be a good idea to talk about why these kind of things happen and what you can do about them long term to make sure this sort of stuff doesn't uh, really happen to you. So first of all, it goes back to the 1980s. Uh, prior to that time, there was a rule called the must carry rule that said that uh, cable system had to carry every channel in a market, but they didn't have to charge for them. The rules were reformed actually in the early 1990s uh, to say that there were two choices. A content provider could require the cable or satellite company to carry a channel, or they could opt to charge for it. You had two choices. In other words, if you had a station and the cable company didn't want to charge, didn't want to carry it, then okay, you could force them. But most content providers, most local channels, opted for the second choice, which is to say, they have the right to charge for it, but they do not have the right to insist that it be carried. This changed the economics of cable television and later satellite television forever because instead of local content being essentially free, it became something that cable and satellite companies had to pay for. This began very slowly to drive up costs to the extent that you see these three and four hundred percent increases in the 2000s, mostly having to do with content costs. You see channels charging more and more and more for the same content and where things really peaked I would say were about six seven years ago when you saw a record number of channel blackouts it was at that point that cable and satellite companies and led I think in a lot of ways by dish uh, decided they weren't just gonna pay anything for a channel they would just say okay we don't want it and by standing firm eventually everybody kinda calmed down price increases stopped rising as quickly and everybody kind of got a little bit more comfortable with a, a small increase over the course of a couple of years, especially if they could also negotiate into it something like uh, streaming rights, things that could add incremental revenue. But here we are. Uh, summertime is the time for a lot of channel blackouts because it's when cable and satellite providers want to stand their ground. They feel a little more comfortable knowing that those big uh, high value programs aren't airing and so they can afford a little bit longer blackout. Most blackouts in the fall and winter are uh, really resolved in about a day, which leads me to wonder sometimes why they couldn't have resolved it one day earlier. It's a bit of brinksmanship and uh, Honestly, everybody knows it's a game that you play and you do what you have to do. But in the summer, the equation's a little bit different. Uh, cable and satellite providers can fight a little bit harder to try to keep costs down. Content providers, well, they're not super happy about losing those channels, but it, it does happen. And I would like to point out that regardless of what you see on television, this is 100% driven by the content provider. They put a number in front of that cable and tele or in satellite television company and if the cable company thinks it's too high if they think they'd have to raise rates too much in order to accommodate it they just say no and the broadcaster the broadcaster is the one that forces that blackout they have the right to do it it's their content they have it uh, copyrighted so they have the right to do it but they are 100 percent responsible for the fact that your content is blacked out. They could come to the table and say, okay, well, we're going to keep negotiating. Just let's, you know, pay us the current rate and we'll be fine. They don't do that. Instead, you have these blackouts. And there are a couple of them floating around right now and they've become a bit high profile. However, recently, the equation has changed a little bit. More and more people have become accustomed to having TV antennas. That's the best way to get your local channels. You have the right to receive local channels over the air if you're within a certain distance of the central city that serves your market. And that right can't be taken away from you. So you hook an antenna up to your TV and it just works. 
or you can go to solidsignal.com and look for something that will help you tune and also record channels or you can try to get local channels through another party like uh, for example a Hulu or Sling or YouTube that sort of thing you can take a short preview of those services and hope that it lasts long enough and now there's another option. I have written two articles already this week about something called Lowcast. Lowcast is a free service to stream channels in your market if you're in one of the 13 or so markets that are served. Uh, AT&T dumped a lot of money into Lowcast for the rights to put a Lowcast app on your DirecTV receiver for times just like this. And this is negotiating leverage because you can get this stuff for free no, you can't record it, you can't pause it, but at least you can get it. Well, all of a sudden it seems like there isn't as much of a drive to get those deals done because, you know, people have another option. This is good. This is competition in action, folks. This is people taking television into their own hands. But I do have a bit of a warning, I would say, for the broadcasters out there. I've quoted this number before that... Ratings for local channels are down about 90% from where they were in 1980. Of course they are because there are all these other TV channels, all these streaming options, and people just go on the Internet and they don't watch anything at all. They just do whatever they do on the Internet. There's plenty of other options for entertainment in the evening besides just turning on one of the three channels that you used to be able to get in your local market. So with ratings going down, 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 it's time for broadcasters to realize they can't be driving fees up one more penny, not one more penny than they currently are, and they should actually be considering cuts in fees because ratings just aren't there. And if broadcasters continue to request higher and higher fees, then more and more people are going to get antennas, more and more people are going to go to other services, or they're just going to not watch local television at all. And you know, people are going to learn to be fine with that. And where does that leave local broadcasters? Nowhere. And I hate to hear that because local television is important. I don't think that in this country we sounded the alarm on local newspapers fast enough. Think about your local newspaper. If you're in a small town or a suburb, you might not even have one. Or if you do, it's down to four or eight pages or just an online presence. It's nothing like it used to be when you grew up. Local newspapers have largely disappeared from this country and with it a high standard of local journalism that really we need today. I don't want to get political. I don't, this is not that kind of podcast, folks. But let me tell you, local journalism is good journalism. Local journalism helps people. And we've had less local journalism. The last sort of bastion, call it if you will, of local journalism, and it's not even really local, our television news programs. Television news programs are increasingly being outsourced because budgets are tighter. And I know there's an irony there because if the, they were able to charge more to the cable companies, then they would get more. But, you know, local TV news is important. And if local channels go away because they're not able to be seen on cable or satellite, well, that's not good. That means the last source of local news that we can really depend on is gone. The last source of local sports is gone, which means that the entire sports ecosystem could fall apart because people watch the sports later in life that they played earlier in life. And if people aren't playing local sports, then they are not watching sports television later. This is a very, very high stakes game. And there's a real clear sense of good and evil here, if you ask me, folks. Good are the cable and satellite companies trying to just keep costs where they are and trying to keep representation so that, for example, they're not paying more for lower rated programs. Bad are these large broadcast conglomerates that are asking more and more and more dollars for less and less and less content. So stand up. First of all, make sure you've got a TV antenna, which you can get at SolidSignal.com, the best source of TV antennas in the entire Internet. More TV antennas than anybody, and the best stuff, by the way. And get yourself an antenna. Don't let the right to local TV be taken away because of a fee dispute. Second of all, make sure that you have all the options 
available to you. Check out DirecTV Now. Check out Sling. Check out Hulu. Check out YouTube. Check out Locast. Find different ways that you can receive the same content. You can even, in a lot of cases, go to a PC and just stream it live that way with no additional app. Folks, you know, take your TV watching into your own hands. Vow to save local television from itself. It's TV station owners that are doing this, folks. They are not thinking ahead. And you, it is up to you to save the entire television ecosystem. That's right. That's my podcast for today. A little bit longer, a little bit crankier. And thanks for listening. And as I said, I have to say it a third time because after all, who pays for this podcast? Go to SolidSignal.com, get yourself a TV antenna, and take control.